currently, as you can see on my screen, I'm currently logged on to two party sessions. So these two party sessions are on the same node. And the cluster that I'm using for this video is, if I can show you, if you can focus on the bottom screen, has to be admin list nodes. So I'm currently logged on to this very basic cluster that I have here. So I just have one master aggregator and one leaf on my cluster. And this master and this leaf is installed on the same host. And the version that I'm currently using for this video is 7.5.12. So we'll be doing this video on this very basic cluster that I have here. Right. So let's get started. First of all, why a planned cache needs to be there in an RDBMS. Okay. So whenever a query is executed, for the first time, it is compiled and a query plan is generated for that query. Every query requires a query plan before it can be actually executed. And this query plan is stored in the plan cache. Now, when we have the plan stored in the plan cache and when that same query is run again, another new plan does not need to be created for that same query. Rather, it uses the same cached query plan, which improves the performance of the query. And that is why this concept of planned cache is there in the RDBMS. Now, if we talk about single store, in single store, we have in-memory as well as on-disk persisted planned cache. So how do I get the information or how do I get the details of everything that is there in in-memory planned cache? So if you can focus on my top screen, show planned cache. So if I run this command, and if I can spell show correctly, so if I run show plan cache command, then I'll get the information about all the plans that are currently there in memory, right? And the same information, we'll actually see more details about this. So currently this gave us nine rows. And uh, if I run this query, show select star from information schema dot plan cache, get the same information about the plans that are currently there in memory, right? So I run select star from information schema dot plan cache. So this table is there in information schema system database, right? So in case we want to see what are the columns that are there in uh, this plan cache table, I can run describe information schema dot plan cache and I'll get the list of all the columns that are there in the plan cache table. So we can pick and choose what columns do we need in uh, in our uh, query that we run or whenever we are looking to find out any information on uh, the plan cache. We can pick and choose the columns, the specific columns that are needed for our query. And in case you see that I want to see the description of all these columns, I can go to the documentation online. And if I search information schema or plan cache, and I get the details of all the columns that are in play. So database name, query text, plan ID, plan type. So all the details of all the columns and their description is there on the documentation. So you can go through the documentation and you can find out what column is particularly needed for the thing that you're currently trying to work on, right? So going back to my party sessions. So that top screen showed you uh, the details of in-memory plan cache. Now, what about the plan cache on disk, the persisted plan cache. So in case I want to see the information of a persisted plan cache on disk, then I can go to the path. So it depends on the installation directory. So you might have memsql installed on some different directory and I have it installed in some different directory. So I can go to var lib memsql and I have this master aggregator and leaf over here. So uh, these two files are, these two directories are there. So I can go to one of those directories. So I can go to this 42, the directory starting with 42. And if I see the contents of this directory, I have this plan cache directory here as well, right? And if I either, if I see the contents of this plan cache directory, I see plenty of subdirectories in there. So all those subdirectories are holding the plans, the execution, execution plans of the queries that we are running on, on a node, right? I said on a node for a reason, because we need to understand that the plan cache is different for each node of the cluster. It is not that it is a combined thing. So if we have one master aggregator, four child aggregators, 10 leaves on the cluster, so each node of the cluster will have its own plan cache. This is not shared. Each cluster, each node of the cluster is having its own plan cache. Right, so moving forward, 
let's see what are the different variables that are in play here. So there are three main variables that are in play. So if I run, so please focus on my uh, top screen. So if I run show variables like plan, observation, oops, I needed to give file card here as well. So yeah, like this. So show variables like plan cash, ex plan expiration. So I get three variables in here. Disk plan expiration minutes, enable disk plan expiration, and plan expiration minutes. So these are the three main variables that are important considering how plan cache works in single store. So let's see the definition of these variables in the single store documentation. So let's start with plan expiration minutes. And I go to the documentation and I search for list of engine variables. Okay. This is what I get. And if I search for plan expiration minutes, so what is the definition of plan expiration minutes variable? So the interval in which a query must be reused at least once or it gets unloaded from the query plan cache. And the default value of this is 720 minutes, which is 12 hours. So now what does this mean? So in those 12 hours that this variable is set to, so in those 12 hours, if a query plan is reused in the plan cache, that is fine. If it is not reused, then it gets unloaded from the query plan cache in memory, right? So it gets unloaded, it gets evicted from the query plan cache, right? So this is the this is what the meaning of plan, plan expiration minutes variable is. So let's see the second variable that we have. So this plan expiration minutes. So if you search for this one, what does this mean? So the interval in which a query plan must be read from the disk and that uh, from the disk in this uh, plan cache directory that we saw. So the interval in which a query plan must be read from the disk before it is removed. And the default value of this is 14 days. So in 14 days, if a query plan is read from the disk into the memory, then that is fine. If it is not read into the memory from the on disk or assisted plan cache in the last 14 days, then that plan gets evicted or dropped from the on disk or assisted plan cache. And this is what the meaning of this variable is. And this is what the meaning of this 14 days value is. And the third variable is a quite straightforward one, which is uh, enable disk plan expiration. So if I search for this one, I see uh, this just enables removing the stale disk plans from the plan cache directory based upon the value of disk plan expiration minutes, right? And this variable can sync to all the aggregators and leaves, same as the other two variables that we talked about, right? So this enables the disk plan expiration as the name itself says as well, okay? Right, so I'll go back to my party sessions and we'll touch on the next portion now. Now, the next portion is why do we need to have the persisted plan cache and what is the relationship between in-memory and on-disk plan cache? Now, in single store, as we saw based upon the variable plan expiration minutes, by default, a plan will expire after 12 hours if it is not reused, right? So if the plan is not reused in the last 12 hours, it will be evicted from the in-memory plan cache. However, because the value of disk plan expiration minutes is more, that plan still is still there on the disk. So when the plan is evicted from the in-memory plan cache after 12 hours because it was not reused, it could be that in the 13th hour the plan gets reused, right? So the plan will not be recreated, rather the plan will be loaded back from the persisted plan cache, which is the on-disk plan cache because the plan is still there, right? So that is why uh, it is very important that, you know, uh, we set the value of uh, disk plan expiration minutes to more value as compared to the plan expiration minutes so that uh, even when the plan gets expired from the in-memory plan cache, it is still there in the on-disk plan cache so that if it is needed, it can be loaded back from the on-disk plan cache into the in-memory plan cache. And there could be a second situation as well. So for example, let's consider that uh, 
we stopped the cluster or we're stopping node on the cluster. We said that, you know, the plan cache is different for each node of the cluster. So it could be that we stop a node of the cluster or it could be that we stop the whole cluster itself. So when a node of the cluster is stopped, the in-memory plan cache gets cleared out, right? And that is expected. Now, when the node is restarted, the in-memory plan cache starts off empty. Right, so when the node is restarted, there is nothing in the in-memory plan cache. However, as and when the queries start executing, then those plans are loaded back into the in-memory plan cache from on this plan cache as and when the queries are running. Right, so that's why it is very important to have that uh, persisted plan cache in an RDBMS so that uh, the plans can be loaded back into the memory from the persisted plan cache in the event of uh, uh, it could be a planned restart, it could be a a disastrous restart or it could be anything else so based upon these two or three situations the plans can be loaded back into the in-memory plan cache from the on disk plan cache as and when the queries run now what all this means is so uh, the advantage of having uh, plans in the in-memory plan cache or oh, sorry in, on the on the persisted plan cache for the longer duration is that the plans do not need to be recompiled when the plan expires from the in-memory plan cache or in the event of a node restarting or a cluster restarting. So the plan does not need to be recompiled. It can be loaded from the persisted plan cache to the in-memory plan cache, right? And this is how in-memory and the on-disk plan cache or the persisted plan cache are related to each other, right? I hope that is clear to everyone. Now, how do we find out the plan cache? Uh, sorry, how do we find out the plan cache of a query in memory and on the persisted plan cache. So how do we find out the plans of a query in memory and on disk and persisted plan cache? We'll see that in the uh, in this section. Before seeing that, let us actually generate a query plan. So for example, uh, if I see show databases, I have a three, uh, three databases, three system databases, and then I have this organization database as well. So yeah, please focus on my uh, top screen, top party session. So if I use this organization database, and if I see the list of tables in here, I just have one table in there. So what I'll do is I'll select start from employees. So I ran this query. Now this query would have generated an execution plan. Now, how do we see that execution plan of this query? So before, uh, I'll be using that information schema dot uh, plan cache table to see the execution plan of this query. So before doing that, let me run that uh, describe again so that I can pick and choose the columns that I need. Right. These are all the columns that I have. So what I need to see is I need to see the text of that query. So I'll use query text and I'll use plan ID. Give the where condition where query text like say employees in this case because that was a very simple query. But if we know that uh, for what query we are searching the execution plan, then we can uh, you know use that in the where condition. But in this case, uh, we just had a simple query, so I, I can just use this employees table in here. And when I run that query, I'll be able to see that okay, uh, this is the query text and this is my plan ID. So now in order to see the execution plan of this query, I can obviously see the execution plan of that query by using the explain command as well, but it could be uh, needed in you know some various uh, scenarios or in various situations that you want to see the execution plan of a query uh, from the past when it ran the last time or when it ran like uh, a couple of days ago, a couple of hours ago. So in that case, you might need to use information schema dot plan cache or in memory plan cache to see the plan of that query. So how do I do that? I can run show plan, then I give plan ID in here. So show plan 924 and I should be getting an error here. Okay, so I got the error. So what is the error? The plan does not have the associated explain information. Enable this plan explain must be enabled at the time of plan generation. So this variable needs to be enabled in order to see the plan of a query using this method, using the plan ID in information schema or plan cache. So what I'll do is I'll enable this, enable disk plan explain variable. And as it says, it must be enabled at the time of plan generation. So I need to run this query again. I need to generate the query plan again. 
Okay, so before doing that, I'll drop all from plan cache. And we are actually going to see that uh, this method uh, of dropping the plan cache going forward in this video. So I'll explain it at that time. So drop all from plan cache. And now I, in order to enable that variable, so set global enable this plan explain to on. Now this variable is on and I can verify as well. Show variables like, right? So it is currently on. So now what I'll do is I'll run that select star from employees query again. Select star from employees. Select correctly. Select star from employees, right? So I got the list of employees that I have here. Now this will again have generated an execution plan. So how do we check that execution plan again? I run this same query again. Click query text plan ID from information schema dot plan cache where query text like employees, and I get the plan ID as thirty. Okay. So now again, if I want to see the execution plan of this query, I run show plan nine thirty and I'll see the execution plan of the query now, because now I have that uh, variable enabled this plan explain enabled, and I'm able to see the execution plan of this query here, right? So using this execution plan, the query has executed. And as I told, we can get the same information by using explain as well, but this might also be needed in some certain scenarios that we need to see the execution plan of the query from the plan ID that is there in the information schema dot plan cache table, right? So the next thing that we need to see is where do we have this plan saved on disk? So again, let me run describe. So we can choose the columns that I need. Okay, describe. And now what I'll do is I'll run select and I'll choose this MPL path column and I'll choose this activity name column. Okay. From information schema dot plan cache where query employees okay so what i get is i get that the path of this execution plan is this one this one right so that same directory that we saw in the beginning so var lib mem sql then this id of uh, one of the nodes, which is the master aggregator in this case, then plan cache directory, and then this subdirectory, 0, C, 2. So let's go to this directory in my bottom screen where, where I'm logged in, in, where I'm uh, logged in on uh, the OS level. Okay, so I CD to this subdirectory. Okay, OC2, and if I list the contents in here, I see that I get this information of the execution plan of this query. So all these files are binary files and those are not human readable. Even if you try to uh, do a cat on these files, you will not be able to get any useful information from these. So these are all the binary files that are in there. But just in order to see where the plan is located on the disk, we get this path in uh, this MPL path column of information schema dot plan cache. And in the past, in the previous older version, we did not use to have this MPL path column in information schema dot plan cache. So how did we use to see where the plan is located? We used to have this activity name column in there and we used to focus on this value. So in this value, after select underscore employees or for that matter, for any query, we saw the first three characters of this number. So in this case, it is zero C two. So from 0C2, we knew that uh, it, this plan will be existing in the 0C2 subdirectory, which is this one in the plan cache directory. So this is how we used to find out the plan information on disk in the past. But now uh, we have this MPL path column in the information schema dot the plan cache table. So that makes it easier now, right? So coming to the next section and the last section on in this video, we have how do we clear out the plan cache? So, because it could be a situation that, uh, you know, the queries keep on running in the cluster, right? So, because the queries keep on running, both in memory and on disk plan cache, these can consume high amount of memory and the storage space, right? So, it, it is very important to define uh, those variables that we saw in the beginning, that uh, the plan cache expiration minutes and enable disk plan expiration and also 
uh, display and expression minutes. So it is very important to enable those variables so that uh, the in memory as well as on disk plans get cleared out at regular intervals. But it could still be the possibility that we need to clear out those plans with manual intervention, right? Because it could be that the plans are not getting evicted uh, uh, from the disk plan cache as well as from the in memory plan cache and your footprint is increasing, or it could be any reason, right? We have seen the uh, many scenarios in which, uh, you know, the on disk plan cache directory has captured around one terabyte size as well in the past. So it could become important for you to, uh, you know, drop or delete the plans manually with manual interventions so that uh, your footprint can be decreased. So how do we do that? The first way by using which you can do it by using drop all from plan cache. And also, you know, the plans get dropped by using uh, analyze command as well. But that analyze in itself is a different topic, so we can leave it for the other day. And for today's session, we'll focus on drop all from plan cache, which is the first method to drop all the plans from the disk. So there is a catch about drop all from plan cache as well. So when I run drop all from plan cache, cache which means drop all the plan from in-memory plan cache, what it does is it drops all the plans from in-memory plan cache as well as it drops all the corresponding plans from on disk persisted plan cache as well. So for example, in this case, we have this uh, uh, plan for employees, uh, select star from employees query in memory as well as on disk as we see here, right? So if I run drop all from plan cache, okay? And if I run that same query that I ran before to select the plan cache, or sorry, for, to select the, uh, execution plan of that query in the information schema or plan cache table, I'll get nothing in there because I dropped all from the plan cache. Also, if I am still in that directory, 0C2, uh, please focus on my uh, bottom party session. I'm still in that directory. If I go PWD, I'm still in that directory, which is plan cache 0C2. And if I run LS in this directory, I don't have anything in there. Because when I ran this drop all from plan cache, it dropped the plan cache of select star from employees query from in memory plan cache, as well as is it dropped that same plan from persisted plan cache as well, which is on disk plan cache. And this is the behavior of drop all from plan cache. What, what is the catch about this? So it could be a situation that in the persisted plan cache, which is the on disk plan cache, we have some plans for which the corresponding plans are not there in memory, right? I'll say it again, there could be a situation that if a plan is there on in on disk plan cache in the persisted plan cache, it could be a situation that the corresponding plan for that is not there in memory, right? So in that situation, when we run drop all from plan cache, it will not drop all the plans from the persisted plan cache. Right, so all the plans which are there in uh, persisted plan cache for which the corresponding plan cache are not there in memory, those will not be dropped from the persisted plan cache, right? So we need to drop those plans as well in some situations because again, we might need to reduce the footprint and uh, we might need to, you know, it could be that uh, those plans are not in use anymore or uh, yeah, for any reason, we might need to drop the plans from the persisted plan cache. So drop all from plan cache will not drop all the plans. It'll just drop the plans that are there in memory and for which the corresponding plans are there in the disk as well, but it will not drop all the plan cache. It will not drop all the plans, sorry, or the plan cache, all the plans. So how do we delete all the plan cache plans that are still there in the persisted plan cache, which is on disk plan cache? So there is a second method that we need to use. So what do we do? So we saw all those variables in the beginning. So show variables expiration, right? So what we need to do is we need to make this plan expiration minutes to zero. And before actually doing this, let me generate that query plan again. Select start from employees. Okay, that plan should be there in memory and it should be there in the same directory here as well. So at the bottom of the screen, please focus. I have that same plan here as well, right? It has come back. So when I ran that query select start from employees, that plan has come back in memory as well as on disk. 
So now, in order to uh, drop all the plant caches, uh, all the plants, uh, including uh, in-memory plant cache and uh, on-disk plant cache, we what what is the second method that we will use? So what we will do is we will set uh, not at the bottom. It needs to be at the top of my screen. Set global plan expression minutes to. What I did is I have told single store to essentially do not retain any plans in memory, right? So plan expiration minutes to zero. And I will again do the same thing for this plan expiration minutes. This plan expiration minutes to zero as well. So if I see the values now, I see that these are set to zero now. Plan expiration minutes as well as disk plan expiration minutes. So after setting these values to zero, I should be waiting for some time because there is a garbage collector thread that is running in the background. And uh, by default, in every 20 seconds, it tries to delete all the plans. And uh, then if it is not able to do this, it, it triggers again. So in 20 seconds, if uh, it can drop any plans, it will drop those plans and then it'll trigger again. So this process, if there is if there are plenty of plans in your uh, in memory plan cache or in your uh, on disk persisted plan cache, then it, this process might take a bit of time for all the plans to be deleted, but it does its work gradually. So we should be waiting a little, like maybe a minute or two or maybe uh, five minutes to ensure that all the plans get dropped from the in memory plan cache and on disk plan cache as well. So now if I run the same query again to see whether the plan is still there or not in memory, it will not be there because we set the value as zero. And same thing at the bottom of your screen. If I run LL, I don't have anything in there as well because I set the disk plan expiration minutes to zero as well over here. So this, by using this process, we are able to delete all the plans that are there in memory and all the plans, including those plans for which the corresponding plan is not there in memory, from the persisted plan cache as well. We are able to delete those two by using this method. And I just want to show you the error logs as well, because you know we should be monitoring the error logs as well when uh, uh, this process is happening. So at the bottom of my screen, in the bottom party session, if I come out of plan cache directory and if I go to trace logs, and if I kill the memsql log, then I should be seeing these kind of messages every now and then. So it evicts these many plans, it evicted four plans, it deleted 36 tail plans from the disk and also this keeps on giving us information about how many plans it has found and it has dropped from in memory as well as on disk persisted plan cache. So when we set these variables to zero and uh, when we monitor, we'll be able to find out by using error logs, how many plans and uh, whether this process is actually doing something or not. So we should be able to see it from the error logs in there. Now, what is the third way to do that? The third way is the killer way to do it, right? So in the third way, if we are still not able to uh, clear everything, although we should be able to clear everything by using this method, but as I said, this method can take a bit of time to clear everything, right? Because uh, of that uh, garbage collector thread that is, are running in the background. So it might take a bit of time. So if we had like one terabyte uh, uh, filled up in a node uh, in that uh, on this persisted plan cache, then it might take a bit of time to clear all those plans from the persisted plan cache. So in that case, what you can do is, if it is possible for you to bear some downtime, so what you can do is you can run, you can stop the node and you can directly delete the contents, the subdirectories in the plan cache directory. So how do you do that? Very simple. So SDB admin stop node. Let's make some warnings. So I say, okay, stop all the nodes. Select an option. I selected three. Would you like to continue? Yes. Okay, so it is uh, stopping the whole cluster. And in your situation, you can stop the particular node in which you are facing the problem. And it has stopped the cluster. So what I'll do is I go to my plan cache directory. And I list the contents in there. There are plenty of things in there. So what I do is using sudo rm minus rf star, the killer way, as I said, that's it. Everything is gone. The plan cache is empty, right? And then you can, again, start your cluster. Okay, instead of stop node, I say start node, and I start my cluster. 
right? So in this way as well, you can clear the plan cache. But as I said, this is the killer way. You need to stop your cluster. You need to bear some downtime in order to do that. So we saw uh, how do we drop the plan cache, but we need to be clear in our mind that dropping the plan cache comes at a cost because now when you have dropped everything from the plan cache, the queries that are coming in, they need to be recompiled again, right? So there is a performance hit in that. So whenever we are planning to do such a drastic thing, uh, like clearing out the whole plan cache, we need to be clear in our mind that uh, it comes at a cost, right? So all the queries will need to be recompiled and those will be a little slow to begin with. So we need to bear that in our mind. So that is it for this video. And I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, learned a thing or two about plan cash in single store. Thanks for watching.